Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to drill holes in stones and stuff, and all you need is one of these. Yeah, I'm serious. I find a stone and take it home and polish it and hope it shines and also there's a chicken. Hey everyone, this is Clayton, and like I said, today I'm going to tell you how to drill show you how to drill holes in stones and shells, etc. And the only tool you really need is one of these. And some of you may recognize this. Yes, this is the super cheap $10 uh, blister pack rotary tool that Harbor Freight sells. And you may say to yourself, are you serious? <laughs> well, yes, I am. Because all you need to drill, literally, is this tool and a diamond bit like that. Um, but first, let me, let me just say, we're not actually drilling. If you're putting a hole in, say, say a shell. Okay, if you're putting a hole in there, you're not drilling it technically. You're grinding a hole. If you want to put a hole in this piece of indigo gabbro, okay, you're not going to be drilling it like you would a piece of wood. You're going to be grinding it. And and let me explain it. Um, when you think of a drill, when you when you think of drilling something, what what comes to mind? Probably this. I mean, this is your standard run-of-the-mill everyday. Everybody got some of these stuck somewhere drill bits. Okay, thank you, Brush of Destiny. Okay, and if you're going to put a hole in this with this, that, well, it's not going to work. So you would think, okay, let's grab a carbide tip or a diamond tip drill bit. And I don't even have any of them, you know, where they slick the carbide or the diamond thing on the end there, and then it's supposed to grind through the thingy or chip its way through with a hammer chisel okay I know I'm being kind of vague here but essentially that you know this is the standard go-to drill okay but we don't do that with shell and rock we grind them when we cut them down with sandpaper we grind them put them on a diamond wheel you know we grind it away tiny little diamonds on there grind it because drill bits are designed for wood, basically. Wood and softer materials where it goes in and it spins a little bit and it cuts, cuts away. And hopefully this edge is sharp enough that it doesn't splinter the living crap out of anything that you're trying to cut through. And when it goes to the other end, it splinters it out and makes a mess. And, you know, you got to go, supposed to go from this side to this side and drill different size holes, smaller to larger. And... You know, no, forget it. You don't do that with stone. That's a shell. You don't do that with stone or shell. Now, let me get this back. You have one of these with the blades with the uh, carbide on the end. That works for concrete. Concrete's a whole different story. Concrete is usually, you're not trying to put a hole in something this big. You know, you're putting a hole in something that's usually a substantial thickness and width. And even then, if you get within three to four inches of the edge, you got a good chance of that concrete spalling off. And then, then the crying ensues. So, make a long story short, the best way to get a hole into a piece of stone or shell is grinding it with one of these type of bits right here. Now, there's another type of bit called a core bit, which is, you know, like this, and it's got the diamonds around the edge, and then it spins on there, and it grinds around, and then you pull that section out. I mean, you should be familiar with a core bit. If you're not, look it up on the internet. The internet's really cool. But for our intents and purposes, we're going to show you how to do that with this today. Now, another question you may say, why do you have the worst Dremel tool in the world, and you're telling me to use that to put holes in stone. 
Well, there's two reasons. One, this is readily available. Two, it runs on 12 volt. And we're going to be using a lot of water. We're going to be using water in this. This is a lid off of a Sherbert container. Yeah. Seriously, that's what we're going to be using. And I'll tell you why. It doesn't have to be off a Sherbert container. It can be like this, which is off of a container of bullion cubes. Nope, I'm not. There's a method to my madness. Okay, what you do, what, uh, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Like I said, this runs on 12 volt. So if it gets wet, you're not gonna get yourself electrocuted. Okay, that's the second reason. The third reason is it doesn't have enough power to get out of its own way. And yes, you heard that right. Now, watch, I'm gonna start this drill up. I just stopped it. I just stopped it with my fingers. Okay, it doesn't have much power, but you don't need to have some 4,000 horsepower monstrosity grinding away at what you're trying to grind through. Okay. Now, when you buy this in the blister pack at Harbor Freight for 10 bucks, it comes with a little container with all kinds of diamond bits in there. And this is one of them. You can also buy those diamond bits, you know, separately. And I got these on online. Amazon's great. These are what I use to drill all my stones, all of these. When I'm done using them, when the diamonds were off, I put them back in and I put them upside down so I know which ones are bad because you can use these shafts for other things later on. Sorry if that's glaring. Maybe that's better. Yeah, that might be better. But yeah, I don't throw these away. Put them back in the container and you'll be surprised what you can use these for. But that being said, here's the explanation. Well, some of the explanation. This thing doesn't have much power. So when you're grinding through, when you get like this thing, you see that this is thin. You see that? That is thin and flexible. And I could snap this probably with my fingers fairly easy. You're drilling something that tiny. You don't want to have a lot of torque to it. Because if the diamonds catch, I mean, these aren't absolutely constant. And even like this stone, this is made up of different material, harder and softer material. You're grinding through there, you hit softer material, you're grinding away real fast, suddenly you hit harder stuff. It can catch. Okay, and it catch and stall out the motor. Well, that's great. That's what you want it to do. If you have a good one of these that's got a power torque behind it and it catches, it's not stalling the motor out. What's going to give is that softer material around that harder piece of material and your stone's going to shatter. Yeah, didn't think about that, did you? That is why we use this drill that you can stop at your fingers. Because you, you're drilling away and... Uh, we're not drilling, we're grinding. You're grinding away and that happens. You just stop. You don't break your material. Okay, so you don't, might not believe me, but hey, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to find some water here. And this is how this works. Okay, we've got our water. And look here, I have this hooked up to a foot pedal because this, this thing's been used so bad that this switch don't work anymore. Oh, that one does. I thought I soldered that together. Anyway, let's say we want our hole right here and I'm going to put it towards the edge. Okay, that's where we want our hole. Really close to the edge. So what I'm going to do, I usually do this dry at first, get this thing started, and just start a little grind right there. As you can see, I can bog it out by pushing down too much, and that's not the best. It wobbles and waggles, but I've made myself a little divot right there. Okay, can you see that? Can you see that little divot? Okay, that's all I had to do. Now I put that into the water. Okay, I covered it up with water. Great. Now I put this in there and I have it on top of my divot. It sort of holds it right there. All right now, I'm going to start this drilling. Grinding. I'll start the grinding. 
Now you see, I can push and it's really stalling this motor out. I'm just going to give it a slight bit of pressure. Now you might be able to see there's a little bit of like white stuff coming off of the coming off from around where you're drilling. Grinding! So I just wiggle this just slightly and I'm not pressing very hard at all, mostly the weight of my hand. I'm just wiggling slightly, slightly, slightly now. And pull this out. <sighs> Look what we have so far. Can you see that? Can you see that? We've already got a very nice hole started. Okay. And that's the principle. We're just very slightly, slight pressure in my hand pushing down on that. And as you're looking at the water, and I'm sorry the camera angle probably won't let you see it, you'll see a little bit of white cloudy stuff flying out from around that. Okay, and I'm not putting hardly any pressure. Now you can see we're much farther now. We are almost through that. Actually, if you put shown a light behind there. There. There, can you see? The, uh, the hole. You can see through there. The hole is lighting up a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to finish this out. You can hear, if I push real hard, uh, if I push real hard, it'll stall the motor, but I don't want to do that. I'm getting close to the other side. Now what's going to happen, and the reason I have this plastic lid, the plastic lid creates a barrier at the bottom, so when it starts to come through, ooh, it's just coming just about through. So when it's just about through, it starts grinding on that plastic, and it's not going to eat through the plastic, but the plastic's going to stop it from grinding because it won't grind something that soft. As you can see there now, almost, almost through, there's a little white speck, and it's like, oh, getting ready to grind, getting ready to pop through. And when it does go through, it's not going to not going to spall that end out. Now, listen, do you hear that change in pitch? That's change in pitch because I think it just went through the whole way. Okay, look, it's almost through. But that plastic is not letting. It's not going to go through. Let the diamonds go through the plastic. And there we're through. Look at that. Now I can come this side. Give it a little bit of a pass through. And there we go. Oh, this is that odd burr. Okay. Luckily I did that with this, this burr. This burr, the ball is smaller than the shaft. That actually isn't one of these here I thought it was. It's a different size. What you do is you get a shaft that's the same size or smaller than the ball. Now this was real thin and it left it pass through, as you can see. It let the entire widest circumference of this go through. But that was it. That's how you drill. I'm not drill, grind! Okay, that's how you grind. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna change this over to one of these. And I'm going to show you grinding through a piece of stone. Oh, I can't, can't get it open. There we go. Yeah, you see the difference in the size there? And this, that, actually, this is going to go, uh, this ties in. If you want to put a bigger hole in, maybe twice this size or three times this size, you can just step up in sizes. Start with a smaller one and go through. Now you see it's catching just a little bit, but it's not, it's stalling the motor out before it stalls out the, or it breaks the, the shell. It just passed through. Oh, no, it didn't, I'm sorry. Here, I'll do this side real quick. 
I'm gonna go right through there. Now it went through. See? Whee! Now the hole's bigger. So if you bought different sizes of these up to what you wanted, you could, instead of maybe half inch, say you wanted to make a half inch hole for what? I For what? I don't know. But you want to put a half inch hole in there. You start off with this one and then maybe go to this one and go up two or three more sizes instead of trying to grind something this monstrous, monstrous through there. Okay, now what I have here is a piece of Labradorite. It's not extremely, extremely uh, hard, but I'm going to do the same thing here. <laughs> Dry off. Okay, that's where I want my hole. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to come down here first. I keep forgetting this. I have a foot pedal hooked up to this. There, I just started a... Boom! You started a little st starty point hole. Okay. Now I got my... Bit. Okay. Now we got her started. So, nope. I'm just going to start slowly... Like I said, it's just the weight of my hand pushing down on that. You might be able to see. You can see the water flipping away there. Or not water, but there's some um, icky, grindy stuff floating out through the water there. Okay, just a little tidy circular motion. And light pressure. And I'm getting pretty deep into there. Look, I'm about the depth of the bowl. About the depth of the bowl now. Now remember, this is not a quick process. You don't want a tool that is super, super fast, super, super strong. You want something like this that, like I said, if this bit catches, first off, it's gonna tear your fingers right off. This thing goes flying around. It's going to hurt your fingers, or it's going to shatter the stone. And if you listen, you can sort of tell if the motor is grinding or, or hogging down real bad or not. Uh, I wish you could see that. I doubt if I could even get it, a good, clear picture of it. It's just throwing out, uh, throwing out dust in the water. Now you hear that? You heard how the motor was starting to sound? Look, it's coming through this side. Now we can either start on this side. Oh, wait, that might be through. Oh, it is through. It's just through slightly. Look at that. Can you see? Can you see? Now with this grinding, it's not going to spoil that out. So I'm going to put it flat against there and start it up. Boom, da boo. And now I feel the motor starting to hog down because it's pushing against the plastic. And it's almost completely through. So I'm just going to flip it over to this side. Oh, it, look at that. It actually went through just for me taking it over to that side. And look, we have a very good hole ground through there that's the side you know it didn't blow anything out on either side but it made a beautiful beautiful hole through it and like i said you can use one like this if you have a thicker stone you want to have a thicker side wall so you can cover the entire stone with it you want to get it up so that the water is swirling around in there to pull all the debris out Whereas I'm drilling stuff like this, this has a very th low wall, but this ain't very big, so it covers it. And when you get to the point where you can't see the, well, you can see how milky the water got from the debris flying out. Once you get, the water gets a little yucky, toss it out, put fresh water in so you can see if you're grinding away or not. And sometimes you might be grinding away like this, and grinding, and you're not seeing any white debris coming out while you just ground all the diamonds off. So, use clean water, use a $10 Dremel, 
I'm sorry, a $10 um, rotary tool. You're not going to get electrocuted when you're messing in water. You're still going to drill through stuff. You're not drilling, you're grinding. You're still going to grind through the stuff. And, you know, if you want a bigger, a bigger hole, step up in sizes. Start with a small one. Boom. Go to the next one. It's going to be easier. Go to the next one. It's going to be easier. Instead of grinding through with a giant bit first. And, the, you know, there's not any material that I've tried to put a hole in that I haven't been able to with this. Quartz. Quartz is pretty tough. I can drill through quartz. Amethyst. I've drilled through amethyst with this very, very one. Without any trouble. It takes a little bit of time. But, hey, we're not in a quick, we're not in a quick industry here. You know, if you're grinding stones down, you're taking your time to make them nice. If you need to put a hole in, take your time and do it nice. So, so if you like the video, hit that button down there, subscribe, give us a like and all that stuff. And I'll be back with more videos. So thanks for spending some time with me and have a good evening.